Behind Anakin, the long blaster boomed. He felt panic from Tahiri, and turned to find her rushing into the grashel. A ball of fire followed her through the breach and exploded into the monolith standing there, and Tahiri went flying. Anakin rushed to help, but she was up before he took two steps. Magma spitters were cut off. Anakin did not bother to look. Techly, Tahiri pointed behind him, where the Chadrafan was sprinkling stink salts on Tisar's forked tongue. The Barabel was smiling, but not waking. Take him, and go. Every word filled Anakin's belly with fire. He pointed toward the others. You may need to cut a way out. You? Tahiri said. I'm not going. Do it, Anakin snapped. When Tahiri's face fell, he spoke more gently. You need to help Tekli. I'll be along. Yes, Tahiri, Tekli said. She cast a knowing glance at Anakin, then kneeled astride the barabel and began to slap him. Tisar is not responding. I cannot move him and work on him both. Tahiri looked doubtful, but could hardly refuse to help. Blinking back a tear, she stretched up to kiss Anakin on the lips, then caught herself and shook her head. No. For that you have to come back. Anakin gave her his best lopsided smile. Soon, then. Soon, Tahiri repeated. May the Force be with you. This second part, she added so quietly that Anakin did not think she meant him to hear it. All too aware of the growing weakness in his legs, he went to the makeshift doorway and peered around the edge. An artillery squad had set up beyond the thorn hedge, their four magma spitters trained on the opening. No one was attempting to move closer, which meant the main force would be attacking from the other side. Anakin turned toward the primary entrance and focused on what he felt through the lambent crystal. It did not surprise him at all to sense a heavy Yuzhan Vong presence streaming in from the ambush site. He set off at a painfully slow run. Twice he dropped to a knee when his legs buckled, once while trading blows with a glassy-eyed Yuzhan Vong who had no more business in hand-to-hand -hand combat than he did. He won that fight by slashing open a planting bin, then levitating himself while the nutrient mud spilled out and swept his foe off balance. The next combat he nearly did not survive at all, catching an amphistaph bud in his wound and popping the external stitches. His life was saved only when he used the force to bounce his blaster off the warrior's tattooed brow. As he retrieved his weapon and rose, Anakin vomited blood. Even before he was finished, he was using the force to lift himself to his feet, willing himself to run. He had to beat the enemy assault force to the door. At last he cleared the planting bins and spied the door membrane twenty meters to his left, as wide as an X-wing was long and twice as high. The far corner of the membrane rose slightly. Anakin ducked back into the planting beds, freehand already pulling a thermal detonator from his harness. When Anakin saw the figure who stepped through, he nearly dropped the detonator. The newcomer's back was turned, but he wore a tattered jumpsuit and stood a head taller than most humans. He set off for the Voxen pen at a sprint. Loey, Anakin called, using the force to make his weak voice carry. He reached out, but felt only the same hazy Yuzhan Vong presence as before. The newcomer turned, revealing the profile of a sandy-haired human, and raised an old E-11 blaster rifle. Anakin was already behind a planting bin, activating his comm link. Imposter, he warned, trying for pens. The blaster fire crescendoed to a deafening roar, as did the Jedi frustration. The firing angles were impossible. A grenade detonated somewhere, and Jaina yelled for a charge. The door membrane began to roll upward, revealing forty pairs of Yuzhan Vong feet, waiting to rush inside. Anakin opened himself to the Force completely, drawing it into himself through the power of his emotions, not through his anger or fear like a dark Jedi but through his love for his family and his fellow Jedi Knights, through his faith in the Jedi purpose and the promise of the future. The Force poured in from all sides, filling him with a swirling maelstrom of power and purpose, saturating him and devouring him. There was nothing to be frightened of, no reason to grieve. 
He could feel it flowing into him, and himself flowing into it. Anakin was the Force, and the Force was Anakin. Anakin rose. His body emitted a faint aura of light, the glow of his cells burning out, and the air crackled around him. His injuries no longer pained him. He was acutely aware of everything in the Grashel. The musty smell of the droning thud bugs, the sultry heat rising from the planting bins, the huffing breath of his fellow Jedi, even the Yuzhan Vong. Their presence was as distinct to him as that of his own companions, almost as though the Force had somehow expanded to include them. Firing as he ran, Anakin raced along the rising door. Every bolt blasted a Yuzhan Vong foot. Muffled roars reverberated through the membrane. Ahead of him, half a dozen warriors dropped and rolled into the grashel. He blasted these before they could rise, then reached the other end and stroked the tickle pad. The door lowered again. Hot breath. Jaina cursed over the comlink. She's escaping. Anakin could feel it, too. The voxen was moving down and away. He activated his own comlink. The imposter must have opened an escape tunnel. It no longer hurt to speak. But his aura had gone from faint to bright. His cells were burning like fire. Jason, you're in charge. Take everyone and go after her. Jaina's surprise at not having her own name called carried through the force like a shout across water. But she stifled any resentment she felt and said, Can't get there, little brother. The path will clear. Anakin slashed the membrane tickle pad and circled toward the empty voxen pen. He could feel Yuzhan Vong ahead, crouching behind the last row of planting bins, secure in the knowledge that help was coming. That changed a moment later, when Anakin began to pour blaster fire into their flank. His angle was poor for headshots, and his bolts too weak to penetrate Von Dune crab armor. But by the time the Yuzhan Vong realized that, they were being overrun by Jedi. A plasma ball roared through the Grashel door and set fire to a twenty-meter swath of cloning vines. Anakin charged back toward the melted membrane, miniature forks of lightning dancing off his arms and legs, the force swirling through him like fire, burning more ferociously every moment. He was completely filled with the strength of the light side now. His injured body could hold no more. The energy was burning its way out of him, consuming a vessel too weakened to contain it. Yuzhan Vong, their feet fully intact, poured in five abreast. He dropped the first rank from fifteen meters out, his blaster pistol singing out twice between each step, every bolt burning through a face or a throat. The volcano cannon roared again, and a sphere of white fire blossomed in front of him, seemingly from nowhere. Anakin dived and rolled into the wall, hit boots first, sprang into a backflip, returned to his feet ten meters from the explosion. Anakin! Janus' cry resembled a scream. Go, he commanded her through the force. She's getting away. The blaster sang out in Anakin's hand, dropping Yuzhan Vong as fast as it could fire. More warriors poured in. A razor bug buried itself in his shoulder, his jumpsuit half disintegrated by the force energy escaping his body and no longer much protection. He allowed the impact to spin him around, fired again, and once more heard the depletion alarm. The Yuzhan Vong hurled handfuls of thud bugs and rushed, already pulling amphistaffs off their waists. Anakin threw the blaster pistol at the first and dropped him and leapt the second, thumbing his lightsaber to life in the air. He landed in front of the entrance and began a whirling dance of slash and parry, blocking once and striking twice, every attack a killing blow. His aura was burning so brightly that he cast shadows behind his foes. He batted the blade, left to right, overpowering two blocks to open two throats, then sent another warrior tumbling with a hook kick to the head. And still they came, piercing Anakin in three places, one amphistaff sinking its fangs into his flesh. The force scalded the poison from his system before he felt it, and the new wounds troubled him less than the old one. But there were a dozen more warriors behind them, and he could not hold forever. He killed another, then another took a crippling slash to his thigh, and gave ground. The Yuzhan Vong rushed, trying to slip past to the right. 
The long blaster roared from the pen area, blowing a head-sized hole through one Yuzhan Vong and a fist-sized hole through the one behind him. Anakin launched himself into a backflip and landed five meters away. His aura flickered wildly as his cells began to burn and burst. He hazarded a glance over his shoulder and saw Jaina peering over the pit wall, tears streaming down her cheeks, the long blaster propped against her shoulder. Jason was beside her, likewise weeping, trying to pull her away. Go, Anakin said through the force. I can't hold. The Yuzhan Vong charged again, and Jaina fired. Another warrior fell, and the rest came. Anakin flipped another five meters back, then felt someone, a Yuzhan Vong, creeping along the far wall of the Grashel. He retreated until he could see the figure. The Jedi imposter, perhaps thirty meters distant, dragging a heavy cargo pod toward the strike team's makeshift opening. The warriors arrived again, and Anakin had to defend himself purple blade ticking back and forth, blocking and parrying and slipping strike after strike. He faded two steps and saw an opening. He brought his feet up and planted his heels in the center Yuzhan Vong's chest. His lightsaber flashed twice, cleaving the skulls of the adjacent warriors. Then he kicked off, launching himself into a series of force-assisted cartwheels. Anakin continued far enough to see where the imposter had come from, a work area near the Queen's pen. Dozens of tendrils lay stretched along a workbench, each ending in a small cloning pod, some open, some closed. It looked like a tissue transfer station. That was what the imposter had. A cargo pod full of voxen tissue, enough to clone a million. Anakin's aura flashed and dimmed, flashed again and dimmed more. His cells rupturing in chain reactions, the cycles coming faster and faster as less of him remained to contain the energy. He felt himself not exactly departing, but melting back into the Force. He pulled his last thermal detonator off his harness and thumbed the timer three clicks. Go now. Anakin, I can't, Jaina calmed. Anakin raised the detonator so his brother and sister could see. Thirty seconds. He released the trigger. Take her, Jason. Kiss Tahiri for me. With the charging warriors almost on him again, Anakin threw the detonator across the grashel. He wasn't conscious of using the Force to guide it, but he must have because it hit the imposter in the head. Anakin was too busy parrying to see what happened for the next few seconds, but when he finally managed to spring away from his attackers, he was no longer strong enough to flip or cartwheel. The imposter was gathering himself up, rubbing his head and searching for what had struck him. Even from thirty meters, his broken nose and misshapen eye orbit identified him clearly as no monor. When the executor's gaze fell on the silver sphere, his real eye grew as large as his Pleiarian bowl. He reached down. Anakin used the force to nudge the sphere away, then caught an amphistaff in the ribs and went down hard, letting his lightsaber fall from his hand. His aura was only a faint glow, flickering between dim and non-existent. The maelstrom inside was dying away now, flowing back into the force. Omanor rushed for the detonator again. Anakin waited, waited until the executor was almost on it, then reached out with the force one last time, rolling the sphere toward the cargo pod. He did not hear the angry curse that followed, nor did he see Omanor fleeing at a dead run. By then, Anakin was gone.